What's up guys, TechnoViking23 coming to you today uh, with some Warframe and we're going to be doing uh, some Let's Play Warframe continuing on uh, the free-to-play account where we are not doing anything with Platinum and uh, going through and just playing solo on uh, essentially just a full free-to-play account. I do apologize for taking a while to get back to this. It's a series I've really wanted to do and I've just had a hard time maintaining it. Uh, just in terms of being able to keep up with it. Now we're still on Vor's Prize, so we have to raid the Corpus Research Cases uh, to get the parts to build the Ascaris Negator. Uh, which, so we're still technically within the tutorial quest. And then once we get done with this, I'm going to try to take you guys through some of the early planets and uh, just kind of show you how to get through the initial parts of the game uh, without having to get any platinum or uh, having to really use any awesome weapons or anything. We're just going to try to mainly stay with what we earned through playing the game uh try not to spend that many credits and things so hopefully this will continue to be a kind of a fun little series and i got some time today i just got home from vacation actually so i've got about an hour or so where i can just play uninterrupted i have no one here uh at the house to bother me so this should uh, hopefully go off fairly smoothly uh well, other recent thing if you guys are watching this video i do appreciate all the subscribers, and I just recently went over 2,000 subs, so that's pretty cool. So I appreciate that if you guys are part of that. Uh, thank you very much for uh, continuing to support the channel and make it an enjoyable uh, channel to keep doing some work for. Alright, so we have to find the three supply caches. Yep. Well, they don't always work with the Grenier, but, uh... Ooh. I keep wondering why they give me Argon Crystals in the tutorial, because that's something that decays, and it's not likely we're going to get anything we can actually build with those. Uh, it's very important here in the early stages to go ahead and grab anything you see around. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting all those parts. Want to get credits and anything that drops. So anytime you see a little resource thing, just grab it. Uh, always check the lockers and everything too. So I think now in the tutorial parts of the game, they actually put a lot of these things in here. So you can get a little bit more <clears throat> salvage of things. Somebody hit the alarm there. Not sure how. Just shut that down pretty quick. You want to grab those corpus alarms fairly, fairly quickly, uh, because in certain instances later in the game, if that alarm's on for too long, it will summon a bursa, which is a really powerful uh, corpus enemy, and that can really screw up uh, your gameplay if you've got that thing chasing you around, shooting missiles and stuff at you. So. What are we... Oh, it's up here. Not sure how I missed that before, but... Alright, there's one. Let's see what's down this way. And of course, the other thing we're focusing on too early is just leveling up these kind of crappy early weapons we have and also leveling up our Warframe so that we can uh, move into better stuff as soon as we're ready to.
Also, make sure you guys are always practicing your movement skills and everything. Because those will come in handy later in the game. Plus, you're going to have some mastery rate tests that are going to they're going to involve your movement skills, so you want to make sure you're always trying to do uh, your, your jumps and everything. We're just working on it when you're playing the game. But, uh, you know, Warframe can be a really, really enjoyable game. Um, you know, if you get it, just depends on what you get out of it. If you have the time to invest, uh, even if you don't have a lot of time to play, you know, just jumping on. For an hour or so each night you can still make some good progress in the game that's kind of what this guide is going to focus on um god my aim is terrible it's been a while since i've played i've been on vacation for about a week so i actually haven't touched video games picked up controller mouse or keyboard or anything in a while so aim is pretty terrible right now Just notice this floorboard was out here. Let's see if we can find anything in here. Yeah. Just kind of brought us down here. Oh, here we go. Nice little room here full of loot. That works out pretty good. You say Captain War. Whatever you say. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Warframe is a game I talk about it quite a lot that I really enjoy playing. And I like the fact that it is a free-to-play game. The uh, the developers, I know some people have some issues with uh, with digital extremes, and they don't always do everything 100% perfectly right. I don't think there's too many developers that do. Uh, but recently, obviously, Mass Effect Andromeda came out about a month ago, and that's the game a lot of people have been talking about, especially given how bad uh, some of the stuff was in that game. You know, I did my own review talking about some of the stuff that really was disappointing to me. And uh, with Warframe, it's kind of nice to see them just put so much content and development time into a game that does remain uh, completely free. You know, everything that you can get, if you pay, you can still get it playing for free. Uh, for the most part, buying platinum and spending actual money uh, on the game basically just speeds things up for you. Uh, and, and the fun thing is, too, you can actually get the in-game currency for Warframe... Uh, just by trading items. Uh, they give you an opportunity to earn it in the game. You don't have to... You know, most games that have microtractions in them, uh, they essentially force you to buy things. Uh, with Warframe, you don't you don't have that. Uh, so, if you want to earn the Platinum, you can go through the trades, uh, get Platinum that way. That's pretty cool. So, you know, we'll, that's something we'll... Uh, we'll get into that later on in the free-to-play and there's actually a YouTube channel uh, that I'll recommend for that. Because uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about trading in Warframe. I don't do very much trading in the game. Uh, but there are some channels I can point you towards that will have some really good uh, tips for that. And it's essentially just getting really good mods and prime parts and things that people are going to be looking for. Uh, knowing where to farm things. And then once you start getting into that, you can start... Uh, working the trade channel and just you know building up your platinum that way uh, if, so that way if you do want to buy some stuff from the market that doesn't cost credits uh, you're able to go ahead and do that so uh, it's a great it's actually a really great model I think for the way this game is now I wish they were a little bit better at getting really substantive uh, content updates out in terms of more narrative content because that's really the one thing about Warframe uh, if I was going to knock it, I probably would, is the fact that there just isn't a whole lot of narrative content in the game. 
Uh, it's basically just the third person sort of horde mode hack and slash. Uh, you know, there's some good raids and in-game content and things you could do with more players, but for the most part, uh, it's it's kind of just a hack and slash, uh, sort of like the old Dynasty Warriors games. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons I really like Warframe is because of games like that that I played when I was, you know, first coming up on the PlayStation Two and, and some of the other gaming systems. But I had a lot of fun with those, and uh, Warframe is very similar uh, to those for me. So I think that's one of the reasons I really enjoy it. I'm going to try to focus on using my Warframe powers a little bit more as I go through these videos. Because it's one of the things I notice watching my gameplay a lot. I just wind up getting too too involved in the gunplay. And the weapons in Warframe are very enjoyable to use. So that's something I tend to get lost in. Alright, so let's see. These are all going to be damaged. But still, at least we got some interesting uh, some mods we can use there for the time being. Got some more credits. Got those two Argon Crystals, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So, uh, I don't think so. All right, so. I think we have to go down here and craft this piece now, which hopefully we can use. Yes, we want to build it. Now, you'll hang on to that blueprint because there are times later on in Endgame where you could get hunted by a group of Grenier that can actually put um, another Ascaris on you, so you'll have to have that blueprint in order to take it off. So, uh, don't delete it. Hang on to it just in case. Oh, Captain Vor, I don't think so. Captain Vor is a pretty terrible bad guy, quite honestly. He just c continues to fail all the time. All right, so we'll go ahead and claim that. And we just took off the Ascaris. Uh huh. All right. Well, we have no capacity to use any of this stuff. can do that and yeah, we're still pretty weak right now we just we don't have a lot of uh, levels or anything yet all right so let's go find the nav segment Just want to try to get through this tutorial stuff quick so we can get on to unlocking some planet nodes because that's going to lead into some more uh, in-depth things we can talk about, uh, like early farming and things. Try practicing with our kunai a little bit. <laughs> yes. 
I don't want to advance because I can't see half the damn screen. It's like, get off the screen, Captain War. <laughs> a lot of these map sets are going to repeat themselves when you're on Earth, especially, so... There's a couple little areas like this you can jump up and find some hidden stuff. And like I said, early on, and even when you play the game regularly, you just want to make sure you're always grabbing whatever you can. Uh, the more crafting materials you have, the better. Kunai are pretty fun. There's something back in there. I can't tell. And I don't know if they're in the tutorial stages, but you do want to keep an eye out for uh, Ayatan sculptures whenever you're playing through. It's a good way to, to get a lot of endo, which can help you uh, level up your mods. And they're just like these little golden white sculptures you'll find lying around uh, in random parts of the level. It's kind of fun to play all stealthy. And uh, stealth, stealth play will come into the game a little bit later also when we start doing stealth missions. Spy missions, you want to... Uh, Move around as quietly as possible to avoid triggering the alarms, because there's like an objective that'll that'll trigger if you if you hit the alarm, it makes it you have to work a lot faster. Anyways, kind of back to what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, it was nice to finally get to go on vacation for a little bit. It's been a while, I think since Thanksgiving, that I actually took a vacation, had some time off of work. So it's pretty relaxing. It was a really short one, though. It was only about four days. And uh, two of those days were spent uh, in the car driving for the most part. It's about a six hour drive. But uh, like I said, really nice to just kind of get away for a little bit. Get away for a little bit, relax, eat some good food. Go to the beach. And uh, yeah, just overall have some time off to catch up on sleep and just relax. It's very hard to find time to do that right now with work and everything. Just working so much and... I think we just lost our stealth advantage there. Yeah. Alright, so we go back to our main gun here. Later on, we'll get a, uh, a cipher blueprint, which will allow us to instantly hack those things if we want to use it. For now, we're just going to manually do it, though. Well, somebody else was shooting at me, but I don't know where he went off to. There he is.
All right, here is the nav segment. Okay, so essentially what you have to do here, um, um, you can actually now participate in a sabotage mission if you want, where you can basically just get some bonus points. And there is the chance that you can fail the mission if you do that, uh, if you get killed, because now our... Our shields are only at 140, so they have your shields for this part, which can kind of entice you to run right for extraction if you don't think you can handle it. But if you want, you can take this extra objective on. It's not very hard. Um, the harder part is when you have to escape. Because I think in this one you blow up the reactor and the whole ship catches on fire, so it makes it kind of difficult <laughs> Uh, but if you just kind of play and you keep calm, you don't panic when it happens, it's not really a big deal. Yeah. Let me try to sneak around here a little bit. The thing about stealth kills is it gives you a little affinity bonus too, so make sure you're getting those whenever you can. I hope you level up a little bit faster. Now, in the later sabotage missions like this, uh, it will actually give you the opportunity to extract the fuel cells from the reactor. And you can put a coolant cell in it or uh, the thermal cell in there. Basically, you can either make it explode, which makes the entire ship fill with fire, which can damage you as you try to escape. Or if you do the coolant cell, it basically turns the entire uh, ship to ice. So then you have to uh, escape from the ice. I think that's all of them on that side. It's pretty simple. You just uh, that's all of them. Yep. Here we go. Yeah. So everything catches on fire and explodes. <laughs> Now, if you step into that fire, you'll actually get burned, so it can damage your Warframe. And we're to the point right now where you don't have a whole lot of uh, shields or health. It can definitely hurt you. Let's see, they'll also lock you out of the system, so you have to kind of... Now, one thing about this is they don't actually put in any kind of timer or anything, so...
What I just used there is Excalibur's, uh, one of his best powers, Radio Blind. It makes everybody blind, and you can pretty much just insta-stealth kill them. It's a good way to get some easy kills. It's an easy experience. So that's definitely, uh, if you picked Excalibur for the tutorial, that's definitely a, a great power to spam if you have the energy for it. Now the funny thing is, you do these missions, and they make it seem like the whole ship's exploding, but uh, they give you a ton of time to actually, actually get out of it. Actually, I don't. There is no time limit. I don't. I've, I've never tested it, but I don't think the ship will actually explode. There's no countdown or anything, which is kind of a. It would be really cool if they had a, a countdown timer. Alright, so we're still... Everything's ranking up kind of slowly. Didn't get much on that mission. We really just needed the nav segment. So now we can find Captain Vor. And we qualified for our first mastery ring test. Hmm. I'm trying to remember what that is, but I could probably just go ahead and do that now. Kind of show you guys what that is. Okay, so we get daily standing, get some void trace storage, and plus one minimum mod capacity. Let's try it and see how bad we suck at it. <laughs> These are not easy when you have the when you have the basic weapons. So okay, this might not go so great. Where the hell are they? They do give you quite a bit of time now. These used to be a little bit more difficult to get through. That's it. So that's mastery rank one. That was pretty uh, pretty easy. I think the first three are pretty pretty simple. It's primary weapon, uh, secondary weapon, and then melee kills. So not too bad to get through those. And it's important to get your mastery rank up as a free to play account because you want to unlock extra slots for your gear and for your weapons, and you can get more uh, weapon slots and things by upping your mastery rank. I think it's every two ranks you get an extra slot or two slots. So definitely a good way to do that. And your Master Rake's also going to unlock extra things in the market that you can purchase. Alright, we can, we can definitely do that. Alright, so let's take down Captain Gore. Yes, I think we're ready to do this. So this is an assassination mission. 
And essentially what these are later in the game is when you go in and fight a boss. Kind of see what these guys are doing. I don't want to trigger the alarm. So we need to go that way to kill Vor, but if we go over this way... can actually get a bunch of items. That's another reason you want to try to grab all these little uh, chests because you notice those yellow orbs that are popping out. Those are giving us 100 affinity each time. And if you have an affinity booster or double XP weekend, you can actually get uh, 200 experience for those. That was kind of a fail there. but Sometimes you're not at the same level as them and you try to go for a stealth kill. It won't work uh, perfectly. So down here. Wow, I just, guys just kind of stand in there. <laughs> Sniper found me. Alright, we just switch to our gun here. Shut this alarm off over here. Sure you are, Captain Vor. Sure. You've proven to be really scary so far, so I'm really concerned about that. <laughs> He's actually not a bad boss fight, and he does teach you a little bit about uh, the boss. The different bosses have different rotations and different mechanics to them. So, like, when you fight Captain Vor, he, he basically... Uh, goes through like an immunity phase where you can't hurt him and then you have to kill a bunch of guards that, come, that he summons and he'll go through, through that f two times um, so you, you essentially have to kill him three times take his shields all the way down uh, twice and then get the, the final kill on him
And what you want to do is sort of use the... Uh, four is in a nice wide open uh, spot. You want to kind of use that to your advantage. Ooh. Thank you, buddy. That hurt. Use that to your advantage and kind of just kite him around the map a little bit. And you also want to take out these mobs. Because the less guys you have shooting at you, the easier this is going to be. Alright. So he will actually... Sometimes he'll just... Yeah, I was going to say, he'll usually just... Uh, He's got a pretty powerful pistol, so you don't want to take a whole lot of damage from him. But just focus on taking him down. Let's see, like, now he'll summon these guys. Fortunately, Radial Blind does not work on him. It doesn't appear, so... He throws out these little lightning mines, so you just got to kind of stay clear of those. And just keep him focused, and he's usually not too bad. I mean, we're using a level 5 Bratton, Mark 1 Bratton here, so. Alright, now again, he'll summon these guys. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so now we can uh, extract. I'll usually sit around here and kill some of these guys just to get some extra credits and things. Oh, that's a good mod, even though it's damaged. Yeah, just take a little extra time and get these. Uh, but that was pretty pretty quick and easy. Now we can go ahead and extract. I keep forgetting the kunai have the travel time uh, on them. So when you throw them, they do kind of go in an arc. I need to remember to throw them a little bit higher. So here is the extract point. Let's see if we can grab anything else here real quick. Nothing there. Uh, 
All right, and there we go. So that's the uh, pretty much the end of the tutorial there. So we did pretty solid overall. Not too bad. Got that through that pretty, pretty quickly, pretty easily. All right. So we'll have to fight them too, of course. All right. All right. Four anxiously awaits punishment. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so now we've unlocked. Uh, maybe not. I think we're done with everything. So now what we're gonna want to start doing is working on unlocking each planet. So we're gonna do Earth. We got Venus, Mercury, Mars are gonna be our early ones we're working on. You can see here these junctions when you first go through them are going to give you some rewards. Uh, the nice thing is you're going to get some blueprints and some mods that you can use right away that are going to be very, very helpful. Uh, you also get a Sentinel blueprint for finishing Venus Junction. So these are definitely things we want to do uh, pretty quickly right out of the gate so we can start opening up more of the game to play and opening up some different missions. So we got a couple of missions unlocked right now. We're not going to do those right now. I'm going to... I think this is probably a good spot to end this episode because it's almost 45 minutes long. Uh, let's take a look here and see what we have inventory-wise. So we actually have quite a few mods. Most of them are damaged, though. Uh, so they're not going to be... Yeah, pretty much all of these are damaged. And we want to start working on getting... Uh, Non-damaged mods. <laughs> All right, so all that's there. So it looks like we got a little bit more. Stuff that we can use now. Oh, we do have a regular redirection. Okay, that's good. So at least we have one mod that we can start working on. Everything else though is kind of damaged. We'll do Bane of Corpus since we're going to be fighting some Corpus now and then. Electricity and heat. I'm going to go with heat there. Yeah, we got quite a ways to go on some of these weapons. we got to get to rank 30 with our, our weapons as quickly as possible. And uh, you'll get some experience just playing through... Uh, the general first parts of the game. And the other thing you could do too, uh, if you wanted to go ahead and if you wanted to spend your actual starter platinum, if you go to boosters, I forget how much these cost. Yeah, you can actually buy a three day affinity booster. Uh, but if you do that, just make sure you're playing the game every day. Uh, that'll help you rank up initially much quicker. And uh, when you start trading for platinum and you get a lot of platinum, some of these boosters are kind of worth spending it on. It'll kind of speed your progress up a little bit. Now, I know, notice I said if when you start trading for platinum, you don't want to purchase platinum with cash. Remember, we're trying to just do free-to-play here. So, um, But those are some items that you can spend your initial starter platinum on if you would like to get a little bit of a head start. Uh, in the game. 
Well, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. It went a little bit longer than I hoped, but we've gotten through the tutorial completely. And when we get into the next little bits, we'll start playing the actual game and going through the initial planets. And I'll be giving you guys some uh, videos on that and also uh, some of the early farming spots we can use to start farming some relics to try to get some prime parts and some things to trade in uh, with the Void Trader so we can hopefully get some uh, prime mods and some other nice items earlier, a little bit earlier in the game. So, um go ahead and show you that when I get to it. But I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thank you, as always, for watching. And I'll see you again next time.